Hey guys, it's April 14th and I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop and I'm super excited because we are on the very last block of our free socialized program. So it's been 24 weeks of a ton of fun and um, we're on our last block. Now next week we will show you finishing options and that pattern will come out next week. So we'll talk all about finishing, any finishing questions you have I will answer next week. Um, but this week's block is called Energize. The designer is Lisa Bonjean. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the block, a little bit about the designer, and then we're gonna make the block. So when we started the program, I made some nine inch blocks. Then I made some six inch blocks, and the very last ones we're doing in three inch. Her block is called Energize. And the Energize block is an intermediate level and uses corner squares to create beautiful star points. Lisa sewed a six inch block and shared that she used garden gatherings for the entire quilt. The background of this block is garden gathering shirtings. So when you look at the colored prints, that's garden gatherings. And then she has a basic group called garden gathering shirtings, which are those lighter prints. Lisa also shared the blocks that drive her crazy are blocks that have stitch and flip corners. I generally do not like making blocks that waste fabric, but sometimes I make the sacrifice because the block result is cool. My block Energize has three sections to make so it goes together easily in a nine patch style. So when you look at the block, there is a three patch, two um, corner square units that are rectangles and the center. So really you're making four of these units, four of these units, and then a center. And then what she meant by the nine patch is there are three units here, three units here, and three units here. Now when we made our sample blocks, um, this collection right here is a fig tree cinnamon and cream and we used a brown, orange, and green then the six inch um, is using dwell and we used a navy gray and a green and then the zen chic or the basic gray fabric we use navy green and then kind of like a medium print and um, this would be a great opportunity if you have maybe a print that you could fussy cut it would look really good in the center so that's an opportunity for you to also do so this is the block we're doing. I'm gonna show you some of the designer's fabric so you know a little bit about Lisa. So Lisa is uh, the owner of Primitive Gatherings and that is an online uh, quilt shop. It's also a brick and mortar quilt shop. She used to do um, vending at a lot of quilt shows but now she built like a really nice quilt store in Wisconsin and um, so you can visit there. And then this is her collection that uh, it's called Rustic Gatherings and it is arriving in May. And it has um, creams, oranges, and then there is a darker rust, two shades of gray, and a lot of black. Um, she is going to be doing a quilt along on her um, probably YouTube channel probably her Facebook group, and um, we will definitely have the book and the triangle paper you need for it. And um, I will, I will, I have not decided if I'm going to sew it yet because I haven't seen it yet. So I have to do it based on that. So this is um, her future collection coming in May. And one thing about um, her collections that I love is all of her backgrounds. There's always a lot that are very um, non-busy. So I don't like to work with backgrounds like this because they're too busy. And Lisa always has a lot that are really usable. So this is Rustic Gatherings. Her current group that is in stock, it came in recently, is called Red and White Gatherings. Bless you. And there's Lisa right there. And the collection is, um, it's basically, a Christmassy red, but it does have a touch of burgundy. So it's basically red and white. And she always has, if you're ever looking for shirtings, like I said, she's always got a lot of shirtings. So let's jump into the block. 
And I'm kind of sad because I'm going to have to put my binder away that we've been using for so long. Um, but I would save it because, you know, one day there might be a Socialites 30. Um, so I'm going to show you what we're going to work on. <clears throat> so like I always say, when you're, when you're, before you start a quilt block, just look at it, get familiar, see which way you want um, to make your units. And like, for example, this can be done in one step, but these two steps could be combined, that kind of thing. So look over your pattern. Today I'm making the three inch block. And the first step is to take a fabric A rectangle, a fabric B square, and a fabric D square, and sew those together. So what I'm going to do with those is we're going to sew this together with a quarter inch seam press and then add the top and we're going to press. Now one thing I wanted to mention is you can follow the arrows on our pattern. I am pressing all of my blocks open today, the block I'm making today open because it's three inch. And with three inch blocks, you really don't have a lot of room if you, can we zoom in to see that? It's, there's just not a lot of room if it's not pressed open. There's nowhere for the seam to go, if that makes sense. So you would just have seams on top of seams if you didn't press open. But if you're making the nine inch, or the six inch, you don't have to do that. So let's go. And I'm gonna press this open. And then I'm gonna add the, then I'm gonna add the rectangle to the top. Excuse me. And I'm going to pin There's a cute comment that says uh, their machine would um, eat that a seam that small. That's so funny. I felt like that when I first started quilting. So this should be one and a half inch square. Do we know what the one and a half inch ruler is? Oh, here it is right here. Ha ha. So I'm gonna trim this up. Yeah, it is bitsy, bitsy tiny piece. And with this Creative Grids ruler, there are lines in the center and that will line up right there on the seam that you have. Am I feeling better? Yes. I feel so much better. I'm so thankful to not be sick. So we're gonna make four of those, just like that. Now, if you have a machine um, that's not very sturdy, um, just maybe you start with leaders and enders and then it won't eat your, your thread up. So if you're having trouble with that, um, maybe that will help. And steam obviously does help get it nice and flat. And so we're going to make four of these. So super simple, very easy. And just for fun, I'm going to put the fabric F in the center. And like I said, you could do a piece that is um, fussy, that you fussy cut. Um, that's a great comment, Christine. She says, I've ordered that one inch ruler not knowing if I would use it, but I'm using it more than ever. Yeah, I'm using it like crazy. And I'm actually using this one way, not this one, this one more than I thought I would. I thought, oh, I'll just use it to square things up, but I've been using it to draw, to draw my lines a lot. And um, for block 23, we have a video on our reels that you can find for block 23. I was sick last week, and so we had Teresa step in and do that. 
So for this next step, we're gonna make a left star unit and a right star unit. So we're gonna have our fabric E rectangles. Thank you to the super chat from Teresa Gorick. And I'm gonna draw lines on the wrong side of the squares that we're using. Now for stitch length, I think that kind of comes in play with your machine. Each machine, even though it's supposed to be the same, is different. Because I press open so often lately, I use a really small stitch length. I think it's really what you're comfortable with, but the key is when you press, as long as your fabrics are not coming apart or your seams are coming apart, then it should be okay. So I'm gonna do this just for visual. Is we're gonna make four of these and four of these. So I'm going to just follow this. Um, Sherry says she makes a lot of four inch blocks should she press open too. I love pressing open. Now if you would have talked to me a couple years ago I would have said oh you're crazy. Uh, talking to myself calling myself crazy but um, I like the result of pressing open. So basically I'm just following the diagram and I'm going to make these two. Now these, I'm gonna use an open toe foot and stitch directly on the line. So right here, if you're worried that your fabric will um, eat up or like junk up um, your fabric, you can do a leader or an ender. So for example, my machine, when I stitch, it just, it stitches nice. And it doesn't cause a jam right here. Now, if you have a different machine, sometimes it will jam. So, what you can do is just take leftover scrap fabric, so like about a little rectangle, and I would like kind of do something like that. I think I just got makeup on it and then start with it. So any of the mess of your machine goes onto that and then sew onto your unit. And then instead of just cutting, you can do an ender too. And then any of your mess will go on your leader or your ender. But it really, it depends on your machine if it's going to cause that mess. And oh, I forgot to mention, I'm using glue today. I have been really using this Acorn Precision Glue. I wish I had found it years ago. And I'm using it a lot on small pieces. I'm going to uh, press these open. And um, I have never tried a laser on my machine to guide with because my machine doesn't have a laser light. Now, there are some baby locks that have laser lights and some Berninas that have laser lights. I think it'd be great if I had that, but I, I don't have it on my machine. There is not gonna be a spring quilt market. I believe there will be a fall one. So I'm just going to put these back. Sometimes when you're sewing, if you just put it where you're at on your um, pattern, it'll make it easier. Can I explain how Designer Mystery works? Yes, Designer Mystery is coming up. We'll do a whole thing about it next week with where we show some fabric because we're going to actually be cutting block one this week. So I can actually show you the packaging and how it looks and talk about it in detail next week. But it is a program that I started, gosh, I don't know. 14 or 15 years ago and I kind of meant for it to be something pretty affordable if you just wanted to do the block and not have to buy the full finishing. So again I'm going to just stitch on these lines
Okay, my next step is gonna be using a quarter inch foot. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to that. And with these, I mean, you would just keep using them and then eventually you'd just throw them away, but they'd just be full of stitches. I used to do leaders and enders a long time ago. And if I remember correctly, I just stopped because my Juki doesn't give me any kind of bad, it doesn't gunk up, but I've had machines that do that. <clears throat> is the glue I am using washable? I do not think it is washable. It is not, it is meant to not wash into your quilt. So what it's meant for is to hold your pieces in place and for you to um, throw out the pieces you put glue on because, um, but yeah, I don't use it to, and I don't know much about washable glue. Mary says she heard that Juki's need to be oiled often. Do I find that to be true? Um, I oil mine every now and then. It probably should be oiled more, but I, I don't. But no, I, I love my Juki. So here we're going to make four of these. So you're just going to take your left and your right. And what you'll need to do is we'll need to pin at each of these intersections so that the joint, the seams, the seams line up. Brand new to a sewing machine, hoping it's okay to ask here a project recommendation that would be good for a beginner to practice. I would work on a quilt that's very simple, like layer cake lemonade. It's got lots of big pieces. It's a completely free pattern at Fat Quarter Shop. There's not much cutting. It's just quarter inch seams. Layer cake loop. I would start with something really easy like that. So here what I've done is I have pinned so that hopefully when I go over this, they all line up, so we'll see. And it does, it lines up. Does the acorn glue work without pressing it? Yes, I don't press the glue, I just use it and then um, I don't press it down. Why does my thread on my bobbin come loose when it's almost empty when it's sewing? The thread end that is put through the bobbin, I don't know why. That's probably like, um, maybe something's wrong with your bobbin case. Okay, so we have four of these. And so the way the block is meant to lie is to where your arrows go out like this. You could change your block if you wanted to. And you could have like your points out here and then more of your uh, kind of diagonal line would show up. You could also put these where they face in. So there's lots of options with this block. You know, you can make this block six different ways if you wanted to. That looks really good actually. That I really like that, but I'll change it back to the way it's supposed to be. Let's see. That looks correct. Um, what is a shirting? Um, I, can I use it as a cotton? Okay, so a shirting is just a regular print. It's the design of the print. Sorry, I'll put these back. So it's just a name that they used to give it. So this is a shirting. This is a shirting, it's the style. It's just like what old shirts used to be made out of. So not, not this, more like this would be a shirting, but it's not the material. The material is 100% cotton. The style is more what it is. Okay, so here we're going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm gonna show you a little tip. So right here, 
and right here, you need those to line up. So for example, right here, you want that seam to line up. So what I'm gonna do is, you can either do it on the right side or the wrong side. I usually do it on the front side. I'm gonna draw where a quarter inch hits. So these two need to touch and these two need to touch. So I'm gonna pin them that way and then we're gonna do that also here and here and then when we sew the rows, we're gonna do the same thing. Now technically, you know, you shouldn't have to do this, but I like everything to line up. Okay, so see right here, I just line them up. Thank you to Pi Nigren for the uh, super chat. I al almost always press seams open. Yes, I love the way it looks when you press open. I need a thimble suggestion for hand sewing binding. Any suggestions? So everybody in the comments, go ahead and give Karen a suggestion. I don't personally use thimbles, so I can't give you a suggestion. But I know there's a lot on the market, like um, there's rubber, there's leather. So I think there's lots of brands and lots of types. Is shirting also what you might call low volume? Yes, it's, um, but they're different. So low volume is really, um, So low volume would be like this or this. A shirting is more, it's like an old timey, think of like, it's more like very dainty, small, tiny prints. It's usually, you know, a lot of times you'll see it in black or navy and it's usually on a white or a cream. So that's a shirting. You can also consider this a low volume, but a low volume, this, is low volume, this is low volume, but only this is a shirting. I hope that, I hope I answered that right and I hope I saw this block right now that I um, got distracted. Okay, so I'm gonna pin there and then I'm gonna sew down this seam. Okay, so we're gonna hope this lines up. Okay, so will pre-wound bobbins work in a Bernina? Is it RFL thread? So RFL does not make pre-wound bobbins. Um, but um, we did get the bobbins in that Susan Aki recommended, and we're gonna show those in our what's new section, but I have never used pre-wound bobbins, so I don't know um, the ones that Susan uses have part polyester, part cotton. So I've only used 100% cotton when quilting. Can you use glue instead of pins? Here, I would not because you're not cutting anything away. And if you put glue right here, it's gonna be in your finished quilt. So I only use glue on corner squares. Have you or would you ever do a quilt along with art gallery fabrics? I love their fabrics. Me personally, I probably wouldn't because I'm not a modern person. Um, but if they ever host quilt alongs or something that people like, I would definitely show it. How do you store your printed quilt patterns? Oh, that's a really, that's probably the worst question you could ask me. I throw them away when I'm done. So I only buy patterns if I'm gonna use them. And if I don't use them, I mean, I do, well, I will say I do have some metal 
book stands that I got at Michael's, they were super expensive. And if there's something I, I have like one little stand of uh, patterns in there. I don't have very many. So I put them there, but once I use a pattern, I throw it away because I'm done with it. Um, do I usually have my quilt alongs and block of the months in spring and early summer? Or do I stagger releases? Okay, so for quilt alongs for live stream, my general rule is I do what I love. If I like it, if I want to do it, if I have time, I'm going to do it. Block of the months is totally different. That's more of um, we try to use the best fabric. So it depends on when the fabric comes out that matches the style of what we're trying to do. So block of the months depends on fabric companies. Quilt alongs obviously also do, but quilt alongs are also just something that I just do for fun. Okay, so I'm gonna sew down here. Will I, sew some, will I show some fabric options for summer memories? So we did do that two weeks ago. So I would go to the live stream from two weeks ago and we have lots of fabric options in there. What is the name of the book Kimberly mentioned on Rustic Gatherings? Um, yes, I am not gonna release that yet because we don't have it in stock. I found out about it uh, this morning actually. So when I have more information, that's why I kind of hate to tell y'all stuff because then y'all want to know all the stuff. Um, but once I have more information, I will definitely share it. Obviously won't share it until Lisa Bonjean announces it for her store first. But once I have information and have permission, I will tell you. So it looks like everything's lining up and I'm gonna still do that here and here and here and here. I'm gonna chop this one off. Let's see, do I just add the tiny blocks in with larger blocks or are they just for a tiny quilt? So it just depends. Um, this one, you'll see next week in our finishing, we have an option where you can just sew all the three inch together, the six inch together, the nine inch together, or, you can sew together the three, six, and nine. So it just depends. Okay, in addition to pinning right here and right here, I also need to pin right here and right here so that this point matches. The Fat Quarter Fabric by Lisa Bonjean is called Rustic Gatherings and it will ship in May. I have a question on one of Lori's cutting instructions and in scrappiness is happiness. Who do I send my question to? Nova, N-O-V-A, at fatquartershop.com. Is she here today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's here today, so she'll be able to answer. What is the name of the, oh, I just answered that. Would the gatherings red, white, and blue work for the Jelly Roll project you have planned? Which Jelly Roll project? I don't know what Jelly Roll project. So on that so along, I promise I will answer your questions. Not today, because I don't even have the info. Oh, Linda Smith says I'm the best. Thank you so much. Do I, oh, so I've answered those two. Okay, so just pop in if you have any questions. Hopefully, with even with all these pins, my seams will come out right. Now, one thing I did want to point out is I try to never sew over a pin. Uh, some people do, some people don't. I think it's personal preference, but what I try to do is once my needle is about right here, I'll pull the pin out.
Okay, so right here you can see that that seam flipped over. So I'm gonna fix that. <clears throat> to fix it, I'm gonna put my seam ripper here. And when you stitch with a tiny stitch length, it's gonna be harder to pull up. And then I'm just gonna sew right back over there. And when you sew over it, just start slightly before where you, where you pulled your stitches out. Thank you to the Bethola for the super chat. She says, happy spring, everyone. Yes, oh my gosh. It's still snowing some places. It needs to go away and the weather in Austin. I need to, I have always lived here in Austin. And um, I've seen Austin change, but I will say that the allergies have never changed. They've, I have always had these allergies, but um, this year they're really bad. So that looks good. I'm going to take a little sip of a drink because I'm really thirsty. Oh, this is a great question. Nadine asks, do I do most of my quilt piecing at work or at home? At home. I do everything at home except for what you see on camera. Now for the videos, some of the step outs I don't do. So I don't do all of that. And then um, sometimes Teresa will piece my quilts together. So for example, this this one, when we get to finishing it, I'm not gonna actually do it. Teresa's gonna do it for me. So some of that um, I can, I cheat. And Teresa does that at work. So she has the best job ever. Will I be doing a tutorial for the 2023 mystery for putting it all together? We've never done videos on designer mystery. Um, it's just something we've never done. So we're, I don't think we're gonna add that. I don't know, I mean, I film pretty much every day. If I added another filming day, I might pass out or something like, I don't think I can add any more to my schedule. I wish there was a second Kimberly who could just do all the things that I don't wanna do. Do I know when Everglow is shipping? Um, it should be soon. Um, I saw it, We it should be any day. I saw pictures of bolts of it on Tula Pink's Instagram. Thank you to Maria, Mary Aria. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Okay, so I am trying to pin all these little points, these little, I'm surprised that with all my talking today that I've actually not messed anything up. So hopefully I won't. So see how many seams there are in this? You can see it's not coming out exactly square because there's so many seams, it's just kind of pushing everywhere. I'm gonna show you how to trim that up. Bonnie asks, will I ever go on a quilting cruise? Bonus if it included a mystery somehow. No, not right now. Uh, the reason, I have a lot of kids. And I do two vacations a year without my kids, without my husband, usually. One is usually going to Lori's house. Um, every now and then I'll go on a cruise with a friend, which is what I'm about to do. Okay, this one's really coming out not square. Um, so I don't like to take any other time away from my kids. Okay, so now this is a hot mess express is what this is. Will I be kitting the new J Bird pattern Everglow? No, I'm not. I don't have a plan to kit it. Okay, so look at that. It is like too big here and too short here. Okay, so, so I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the center lines, there's these white lines, you can't see them on camera, but 
put those on the seams. And I'm gonna trim around here, making sure I don't cut off anything. But right here, turn it to show you. Right here, the short the seam is too short. See how that goes in? So I'm gonna put two little pins here. And that means to either me or Teresa that when you're sewing that in, you account for that so that you don't have a curve. So anytime I miss a seam like that, I just put little pins in. I'll probably push them in a little bit further. And that just tells me or Teresa, hey, you need to look. Kimberly messed up. So there we go. Okay, so I'm going to show you the blocks compared. So this is a uh, six, three, and then this is the nine, if you want to see how big the nine is. Obviously different fabrics. And I think we still have a lot of the dwell dot in stock, which is really good. So um, that is our Socialites Block 24. Remember, next week um, I'm going to talk all about finishing. So if you have finishing questions, you could submit them now. Not now in the live chat, but in the video after. And Ashley could kind of have those all so that we could answer all of them at the beginning. So if you have finishing questions, you would put those at the end of the video so that I can save them for next week. And I am going to take a quick little break so we can move everything on the set. And we're going to do fun, fun, fun trunk shows. Lots of quilts, blocks, all kinds of stuff. So... Um, I'll be right back. So um, I'm going to answer any questions that were in the queue first, and then we're going to start talking about a future sew along that we have planned. And I'm going to first answer Sandy's question. So she asked, how would I or Teresa sew that in? So I don't have this background in the room, but I have, you know, strips of fabric. So um, let me get it on a mat real quick so you can kind of see how 
I would do this. Now, I, I can't speak for Teresa, but I'm pretty sure this is what she would do. She's an amazing seamstress. She actually made all of these blocks. She's amazing. Okay, so obviously when you line it up, you want it to be lined up like that. So when you put this on and you flip it over, if you do it just like that, this lines up. You don't want to pull your fabric over here. You want it to be here. So then I would just remove this pin and put it right here. And that's, that's how you account for it. You just know it's going to be short. So you kind of do exactly what I just did. Um, hopefully that helps. And that's the way I can get blocks to be kind of perfect is using those square rulers. And you don't have to be as like meticulous as me. Like you don't have to, it's just if you want to. Would I ever host a quilt retreat? Probably not right now. The same thing with my kids. So like I have to have like some personal time with my kids. Wait, that doesn't sound right. I have to have some personal time away from my kids. And so right now it's very little like I want to go see Lori every year, once or twice a year. I want to do like my little crime con stuff that I do. And that's all I want to ever take away from my kids. So if I took away, like, I'll give you an example tomorrow. I have to be an hour from my house at nine and 11. From there, I need to drive another hour and a half. I, I, my, if I was not at home tomorrow, my kids would not get, one of my kids would not get to his basketball game because it takes me and Kevin to shuttle all of them. So I just, if I'm gonna take time away, it's gotta be, I don't know, maybe when I'm older. Why am I talking so much? Whoever is behind the camera, thank you for capturing all the wonderful tutorials. Good job, Jordan, his birthday's Monday. So everybody can say happy birthday, Jordan. Now he's gonna be mad. Michael says, uh, Michael Ann, Kimberly, I donated to Make-A-Wish and it didn't go to your fundraiser. Can't call and send an email. It was $50. I want it to do Bountiful. Will I get, will I get to get Pattern? Yes, so Pattern is free. And, um, you know, as long, it, as long, if it doesn't go to us, it doesn't go to us. It's still going to the Make-A-Wish. It's still going to the end goal. So thank you very much for making that donation. And all the free patterns are on, um, gonna be available on Fat Quarter Shop as they come out. Do I pre-wash reds to stop color running? I don't. I do starch all my fabrics. If I ever starch a fabric and it bleeds, I wouldn't use it. Now, I use like fabric from, you know, top manufacturers that doesn't bleed, but if it ever did, I would not use it. And I would probably then photo it, send it to the manufacturer so they know. Is Kimberly's birthday soon? No, it was March 7th. It was five weeks ago. How do I dispose of my old needles? I just throw them in the trash. I know, I'm probably not supposed to do that. Sorry, okay, so let's move on and um, I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna go into different sections and if I see a question for that section, I'll, I'll answer it. If not, I'll hold it till the end. Okay, so the Shine Bright Sampler Quilt Kit. Okay, so a couple years ago, we published a book with Bonnie and Camille called The Quilt Bee. Love, love, love this book. And when I saw images of Camille's new collection called Lighthearted, I was like, oh, we gotta do something with this. So I have two things planned. The first thing is I'm gonna make the big brick house pattern in this kind of a scrappy style. Now, you'll see that later because I haven't made a block yet, but I am, it's on my list. And the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna host a sew along called the Shine On, um, sampler sew along it the quilt finishes at 68 by 80 and we put together a quilt kit so what we've done is we've put together a quilt kit of exactly what you need to make this exact quilt so some pieces you would get a fat eighth some you would get a third of a yard some you would get a fat quarter so and then what nova's going to do is um the book comes in the kit but also what nova's going to do is she's going to put this sheet in there and she's going to put big images so like, so that this can be bigger, so you can really tell what fabric goes where, so that when you get the kit, you don't have to like zoom in and try to figure out what's this and what's that. Um, but I'm gonna show you some blocks. And um, when you get your kit, you can make your blocks just like me. 
um, with those close-up photos or of course you can move your fabrics around if you don't want to follow mine exactly um, and I think that uh, Camille's gonna sew along with us too so I'm gonna show you some of the blocks that Teresa has already sewn for us so this is the beehive block and I want to show you we made it really easy so it tells you how to make one block. So all you have to do is follow the book. It's full color, it's got great instructions. So this is the beehive block. And they're all different sizes. This is the butterfly block. And on this one, I did wanna mention, this is not a woven, it's a print. Cause it kinda, it looks like one of her wovens. It's really pretty. And this collection ships in September, so the kit will show, ship September, and we will um, start the sew-along in October. Now, of course, if the fabric's delayed or something, we'll delay the sew-along. And then this is the dream block. The neighborhood block. And the starburst block. So even if you made the first one, because I made the first one, the fabrics look totally different than this collection. So since uh, Bonnie has retired, Camille has gone more of a shabby chic look and less navies, less dark colors. So even if you made this one, you can still make this one. Um, Teresa's going to be making it and sewing along with you guys. Um, so... And this one really, you're not gonna need too many tips because the pattern is written really well. So it's gonna be really easy for you to follow. And I did wanna let you know, we um, ordered the kits already. Well, the fabric, we need to cut the kits. So they might sell out. The delivery dates that um, companies ask us to order from now are much, much, much tighter. So we have to order our fabric like six weeks earlier than normal. So we're pre-selling this kit. If you want it, I would order it now. Um, I would not wait until later in case it sells out because I can't add to the order. This gray fabric is just part of the collection. So everything in here is going to be from the collection. And I also wanted to mention the white on white is going to be from the collection. They're little hearts. So that is our first thing. Our second thing that I wanted to mention is last Monday, April 3rd, I filmed a video for our YouTube members and I did a members only live where I answered questions and uh, Jordan, Denise and I and Ashley and Sophie and everyone who works here, we're launching a brand new exclusive mystery quilt along for our members called Vintage Remix. Jocelyn designed it. So we did a video talking about it. If you want any information on that, you'll go to April 3rd video in the community post it's only available for members it's a uh, 16 fat quarters and i wanted to let my members know this sunny side is now in stock so this is what i'm using for mine you can get uh the fat quarter bundle the half yard bundle that literally weighs 20 pounds and then another thing is we put together a bundle of just blues because um some people might not like pink or something so we did a bundle of just i'm going to show it to you of just the blues now of course there's a little bit of pink in there but we did a we just did a couple of these so that if you wanted to do more of like a blue and white so if you're a member you need to go watch that video if you're not a member you don't have to be a member but you can't do the sew along if you're not a member so we're just um but really i just wanted my members to know that this fabric is now finally available for purchase and this um this is not the white on white that's used. It's a different one. Okay, so now I wanted to talk about Sew Sampler. So we are on our seventh year. I can't even believe we've been doing this for seven years. I mean, seven years have gone by so fast. So Kevin did a promotion where you could sign up to be in the Sew Sampler program for only seven cents. Um, so that ends today. What I meant is for this to be in last week's video, so you had a week to order it, but if I got sick. 
Kevin also got sick, so I couldn't show you next last week. So I'm combining last week's and this week's. Uh, I'm gonna do an unboxing, and I'm gonna talk about the different quilts that go with the sew sampler so that y'all always have a place to refer to. So for February unboxing, and we do have some a la carte boxes left over at a higher price. So you get this cute box, you get a coupon, I can't show it to you. The coupon is always right here on the back. And this one has a thread grabber. And what you use this for is when you do like tubes or bags. So this is a great tool that you wouldn't use that often, but it's something that I don't even have in my sewing room. So it's great to have. This is great for holding your binding needles or um, cross stitch needles, just kind of putting them all in one place. And it's actually felt. So you could write, um, like if you wanted to put binding or you could write on this and that's why we really like this one because you could leave notes on. The biggest thing I have is I'll have needles, but then I don't know what they're for. So this one you can actually, because it's not batting, you can actually write on this with a Pigma pen. Uh, we put in some uh, pins and they're great because they are skinny. We put in sun washed fabric which of course I personally love. It's also the fabric that's used in our charity quilt. And this is a Jolly Bar. It's five by 10 inch uh, rectangles. We just folded it up so it would fit in the box. And then um, this is the Jolly Bar pattern that you get. So you actually get a free secondary pattern in here. So you get the Jolly Bar pattern in here and you also get the pattern for all fresco. A lot of you have made it and I'm gonna show it to you. But before that, I want to show you these bags and why I love them. It, it, um, we do reviews on the boxes and it got the least review. So I'm going to show you how to use it because I've been using them like crazy. So they're biodegradable bags. Of course, I don't remember how I opened them. Oh, here it goes. And what you do. is you put it like you pull it open and then this right here is a sticker <clears throat> and you put it okay so like look like this sorry front camera sorry is what I'm oh so like you put it on your table and then you put your scraps in here or what you want to throw away so it's so usable you could use it for so many things so I have one of these on the right side of my sewing machine because I'm right-handed and then I have one on the right side of my cutting table so that if there's something um, like if you put it on your cutting table like this I know you can't see it and you have scraps you can just go like this and it'll just like go right in your thing so these are actually really awesome and if you um, you should try them because I love them so that's the February box now, um, I'm going to show you the quilt that I just showed you, that all fresca. I'm going to show it to you quilted, and a lot of you have made this. It's really pretty. So, this, uh, Angel designed this. Angel works on our It's So Emma team. Rebecca pieced it, and it's quilted by Abby Latimer. And this is the white on white from the collection. Now this white on white is amazing, but it is sold out. I'm very, very sorry. But the dwell would look good with it also. And then the back is that beautiful flower print that we used a lot in the charity quilt. So that's February's box. And then March's box um, is also super awesome, also available separately at a higher price. Um, we're almost about ready to discontinue the a la carte. This is, the theme is Scenic Root. Again, coupon on the back. The fabric in here is the um, Simply Delightful Junior Jelly Roll, which means it's just fewer strips, but it's to make this wonderful quilt you're about to see. So the quilt is called Easy Street, and I will say I'm so impressed because I've seen so many a la carte and so many Easy Street quilts made, which makes me really happy that y'all are actually using what we design because we take a lot of pride in what we design. And Angel did design this one also. So in the, in the box, you get the Junior Jelly Roll, the pattern. You get a self-erase marker, and it is um, endorsed by Alex Anderson, 
and if you guys don't know who she is she's amazing I used to watch her uh, I kind of learned to quilt partially from her and this is one of those um, you basically draw your lines for your corner squares and then you erase it and it goes away this is a brand new um, cut right bind up and there is a great reel on our um, social media showing how Teresa uses this she uses this when she does my binding I use the binding tool but this is what Teresa uses so we put it in the box because you know she likes it and this has gotten so many great reviews this is so awesome so what you do is you suction cup it down to your sewing machine or I mean obviously you could put it on your refrigerator you could put it anywhere and your pins just I mean they really stick to it so you can take the pins from the February box and they could go here really cute and then obviously the bliss quilt we're going to talk about in a second but I want to show you this so we didn't make any of these for the store because I wasn't sure how they would sell so the only way to get this is in the March box but it's basically a quilt holder you just put you just put the loops and you put your quilt and then you just carry it like this and you could use it for a yoga mat you could see, you could use it if you have like a kid in um, you know like a nursery school where they take their little blankets to what is that called not nursery school what do they call that Day, daycare their little um, so really anyway this has got great reviews and it's really sturdy and um, it's called quilt strap carrier now the quilt from that box here is the quilt and Angel also designed this one Nancy pieced it and Joanna Marsh quilted it I think I'm showing it sideways because of the quilting that's all right and then this is the back I you'll notice my backings that I pick I like to pick backings that usually are uh, some type of busy background is what I usually I don't use my busy background so much in the front so I tend to put those on the back so that shows you February and March boxes now from April 2022 and March 2023 there were patterns within the box to make this and Joanna Figueroa of Fig Tree Quilts designed it for us and I love it so this is actually my quilt I'm so excited love it I can't wait to take it home this would make such just this alone would make such a great centerpiece and a table if you just did this so I love this quilt so um, Kevin put this as a um, where if you buy the kit today you get a free set of these printed patterns so if you're not in the sew sampler box now you can get these free with the purchase of the quilt kit and you just use this coupon code that Jordan's about to give you and it's gonna be um, just limited until we sell out um, of the kits And so basically each of the months you get kind of a block pattern and we change it up each year so that you get a different look. So we try to change designers, sizes of blocks, that kind of thing. So this one was April 2022 to March 2023. If you are a Sew Sampler member, that was thin. This is your hint to press flowers. So in a couple of days when you get your sew sampler box you're going to get this very first pattern the um, kit is not in stock yet because the fabric hasn't come in stock but you can sign up to be notified when it's in stock the patterns will come in your sew sampler box and that finishing the kit will be a finishing kit and it will be to make all the blocks the background everything for the top and binding and this year's quilt is going to finish at 59 by 67. no 59 by 76 <clears throat> so that is what you can look forward to for and this I will say with this quilt Jocelyn designed this I believe and I really think the blocks that she did this time they would work with so many they would work this is an Ann Sutton fabric it would work with French General it would work with fig tree it would work with Lori it would work with Camille it would work with anything so the blocks this year because of the flowers are very like 
focal. I think you'll love it. So I wanted to talk about some different things like we talked about before, what we've done on the channel. So this was demoed this Monday, April 10th. Probably not my best video because I was still sick. But this is our Bountiful Charity. We're raising money for Make-A-Wish. We have almost raised $50,000. So if you wanna make this, we still have quilt kits available and a backing set available. So your quilt kit would come in this really nice box with the full pattern set. The backing also comes with the pattern. But if you want to know more about this, all you have to do is go to the video that I just filmed on April 10th and then you'll wanna come back because my next video will be in May. And so you have all the way until May to get all of, all of this done. So that's a new thing we did on the channel. The next thing that we're doing that we just started is triangles on a roll quilt along. So this started, I haven't shown it on the video yet because I was sick last week. So this is a completely free pattern from Fat Quarter Shop to you. And we wrote it to use triangle paper. And what I have loved about this on social, because I was sick so long, I was in bed reading all your comments and they're amazing. They made me feel so good when I was sick. So many people tried triangles on a roll for the first time. And they were like, wait a minute, why have I been making triangles triangles a different way? So I really appreciate all the love on the paper and I'm glad that you actually tried the paper because I happen to love it. So this is part one. And um, so this Triangles on a Roll Quilt Along celebrates Worldwide Quilting Day. That was back on March 18th and that's when we launched it. And um, this is gonna be a seven week free quilt pattern designed for triangle paper. Now you can download the full pattern now, it's free. And it uses H200, 300, and 400, which is our triangle paper. So I'm gonna kind of give you tips on um, working with this and part one. So this, I'm using the Fruit Cocktail Fat Quarter Bundle. I'm using um, the blue and white background for, for my background. Okay, so my tips for week one which is this big block. <clears throat> the block finishes at 32 by 32. These are all H400. My tip for you is because I use stripes, I kept them the same way um, because I feel like it really gives it some consistency. So that would be my tip is that if you're gonna use a stripe, keep them the same way and you can see everything just really, I, I press seams to the side. I pressed all my half square triangles open, but then I pressed my everything just opposite directions. So that's part one. Part two is the border. So part two uses H200. And you're gonna make 24 navy half square triangles 16 orange, 16 blue, and 16 green. And you'll be surprised how, um, how much easier it is. And what I did here is added the borders and then added this. On this outer border, what I did is I cut it half inch bigger, sewed it on, and then trimmed it down so that it would be nice and um, 42 by 42. So it's exactly 42 and a half and I did press all of the half square triangles open and then just pressed just any which way for here. So this is part one and part two. And I, on this one, I just started with the fruit cocktail fat quarter bundle. And I started with the three rolls that come, we do sell a set of the three rolls. Um, so that first question I've answered. Okay, so this is triangles on a roll. I'm gonna leave this up here just so y'all can look at it, it's so pretty. These are like the colors of my bedroom. And then week three. So this one started um, a couple weeks ago. This is week three, which is this week. Mm 
<clears throat> so this week you make two friendship stars that use one fabric. This uses H400 and then this uses H200. So it's the same exact, but I have some tips for you and some pop-ups, some pop-up photos. So first, um, this is just, oops, I gotta fix that. This is just simple block. Now what I'm gonna do is on the table, just leave this one so that you can visually see what I'm doing on the side. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this over here so that when Jordan shows the photos, I can kind of point over here to what we're doing. Yay, okay, so it works. So my tip to you is I just lay this out in grids. So laid them out. And that first picture is me sewing down this seam, this seam, and this seam. And I keep it all chained together. And then on the next photo shows me having it pressed and then laid right back out on my design board. And you know, I just keep checking as I go. And then the next one, I have sewn those seams that you just saw. So there were some seams here open. I sewed those together. And then the last one is sewing like this together, this together, and this together. And then you just have three units. So that's how you can chain piece that and be really efficient. So that's just, you know, basically if you look at it, I just press each row separately, each row opposite, press open. Obviously, I need to fix this. Um, and next week will be week four, and I'll show you uh, mine for next week. And you can sew this with anything. The fabric requirements are included on the free thing. The next thing is the temperature quilt, which I started in January. Oh my gosh, I was definitely, um, when... I don't know what I was thinking when I started this because this is a beast of a beast of a beast, but it's really cute. Okay, so I have finished through, I've actually finished more, but this is through March 27th. So what I've done is I keep on the top left uh, alpha bitty, so I know this is row one. Obviously I could tell it's because the different mountain peaks it kind of does. But my tip for you on this is um, maybe have some wine before you sew it. There are so many seams. I'm pressing everything open except for my sashing I'm pressing towards. Make sure you love the fabric you pick because you are going to be using a lot of it. I will say for 2023, I'm going to simplify, 2024, I'm going to simplify it. But so basically I have all of this done. And then what I do is each week I work on it. So each, like on Sunday, I'll do seven at a time and then sew those together. So I actually have part of this done. I just didn't bring it because I'm gonna just keep adding to it. So as I finish a column, I add it. And I always leave this here so that I can just keep adding. So when I get all the way down here, it's gonna be so easy, like on the very last week, you know, I'll just be adding the last one and then I just have to add border. So it's really, the thing that I love about it is that you're building it as you go. At the end, you're gonna be, you know, you're not gonna have to spend a ton of time in December putting it together because you're doing it as you go. Um, I am, I did print out the free temperature quilt planner from Moda's blog to use um, to make it easy. And then what we did on the pattern is we put the different days so that you know where they go. So if you're sewing along, you can let me know what fabric you're using. I hope I don't run out. I will say, I just hope I don't run out of fabric. The next quilt along we're doing, so if earlier when y'all asked about quilt alongs, I just do what I love. So sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less. Right now there's a ton. So this paper is amazing. It's my favorite paper we've ever done. I mean, I do love my log cabin paper, but this vintage kite is so fun. So um, Lori Holt designed this quilt It uses the B Vintage Collection. I'm using two different layer cakes and I'm using this background, C747 Alpine. You need a lot of it. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. I don't know how much you need, but I bought way more than this says. What does this say? 
I just, I think it says eight yards. I think I bought like 10 or 12 just because. So each week my goal is I'm going to do one row. So this is week one. Next week I'll bring week two. And then I just keep them put together. Now the reason I have them all marked together is I use each fabric in each row one time because I am so like weird about it. So that's, once I've used all of them, I know, okay, I've got a row done. Now, this one's gonna finish at 64 by 76. It started April 11th, which was three days ago. There is a blog post on the Jolly Jabber with all the information, and it's gonna end in June. So next week, I'll show you my next eight blocks, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you want more information on this and different tips that I gave on pop-up images, go to the Fat Quarter Shop live stream March 17th. I went into detail of kind of how I made my blocks work. And this paper is addicting, I will just say that. Also with Lori, last year we started the Sew Scrappy Spools quilt along. And I'm gonna show you some newer blocks that I have just finished. So these, um, this quilt finishes at 72 by 90. Oh, it started in January, finishes in December. Second Thursday of every month, we complete blocks. So this is the sew flower block. And um, this one is the hardest one in the series for me because it's all corner squares. So I would say this one, this is not a very hard block, but in this series, this is kind of a harder one. So here's my blocks from that. I'm using the Calico collection. And then my blocks for the week after were the sew geese blocks and you're making four of each and I'm going to show you this so you'll notice when you're making these blocks you have to kind of pay attention to the direction if you want it to lay out exactly the way Lori has it so sometimes my spools are on the top and sometimes my spool heads are on the side etc etc so I just followed what Lori did now I wanted to show you a mistake I made this one and then I realized, oh, they're supposed to be different. So I just kept it. And I don't know what I'll do with this, but I will eventually either, I could either, I could cut this into four half square triangles if I wanted to. So I could get a half square triangle there, half square triangle there half square triangle there, etc. So if I could turn this into four half square triangles from a half square triangle bucket or just save it for something later, but um, that day I must have been in a hurry. But I always save my mistakes. I have a little pile of mistakes. They're kind of fun to have. Scrappiness is Happiness started, I think this one started last year. This one finishes June 12th. This is using Lori's uh, book, Scrappiness is Happiness. And I'm going to show you the most recent blocks. So the first two blocks I'm showing you are called in-flight blocks. Now, like I showed you earlier, I used the seam align glue. I also used it on the bottom ones right there, sorry. I also used the seam align glue here. When you have small pieces like this, this glue really works. So my tip for the in-flight blocks is to use seam align glue. And um, my, I have been getting questions of, does the glue gunk up your needle? So you're not supposed to sew on the glue. So you need to keep the glue away from where you're gonna sew. Luckily, I haven't sewn over any glue. So that would be my, it will gunk up your needle, I'm sure. So if you also want Lori's tips, she did a video tutorial on the Lori Holt YouTube channel called Sew Your Stash series number 34, released March 24th. And on this one I did, um, I think this is a really cool placement of this brown fabric. So that is the in-flight blocks. The neighborhood block is a great block for beginners. And the reason I think it's great is it is planned scrappy. Um, so, you know, it looks scrappy, but it's very planned. Lori did a video tutorial called Sew Your Stash number 35 that released March 31st. So if you want tips from her on this one, one thing that you can do is if you want your block to be exactly 
say it's 10 and a half inch tall. I don't know off the top of my head what it is. You can always cut all this fabric longer and then trim it down. The next block to get us caught up is Patchwork Stars. I love this, I love this um, block. It used, I made it using H400 triangle paper. Um, I did press everything open on this one. And last week, Lori released a video tutorial called Sew Your Stash number 36, giving her tips. So just talking about this block, you, um, another thing you could do with this block is you could use four different backgrounds. So you could do not only four different blues, you could do four different backgrounds to make it fun. And this is a great simple pattern that would be great to make a quilt. Um, sometimes people say there's not enough manly quilts out there. Just using um, blues, greens, oranges, this would make a great quilt. Okay, so last week, also on our YouTube channel, we released a video on how to turn your quilt blocks, if you ever wanna turn a quilt block, into a pillow. It's an 18 inch pillow. So in that video, I talk through my batting choices, pillow forms, envelope blacking, all of that. And um, Lori's the one who taught me how to do the envelope backing. So watch that video on our channel. And I'm gonna show you all of them because this sew along just started. There are nine colorways and most of you are making red which i think is funny because that's the cover but i turned all nine of mine into pillows and by me i mean teresa did this so i did the one on the video and teresa did the rest so we have red and all the skews for all of these are on the back of the pattern so you can see the the skews if you want to make it exactly like lori picked and then we've got daisy I think that this will look really cool if I put this on my my um, couch at home and do a rainbow. And Kevin will be like, can you please get these pillows out of here? Because I, he, I drive him crazy with pillows. He says I'm not allowed to buy pillows. So I say I'm, you're not allowed to go with me to the store. So, really cool. So I'll probably leave these two at work because I'm not a fan of black or purple. But, um... These will probably all go on my couch. I cannot wait to take them home. So I'm gonna take them home today. So definitely check out that video. We're trying to show you more of what we have. I feel like we're releasing more and more on our channel, so we don't want you to miss what we do release. I'm gonna take a little drink because I am thirsty. Who quilted the pillows? Maggie Honeyman, Maggie Honeyman in Dallas. And Lori's books that I just showed you are all written from It's So Emma format and published by me. They're all, she does have some patterns written by Riley Blake, but the ones I've been showing you are, are, are the It's So Emma. <clears throat> so I had this great idea. Um, should I tell the Popeye story? You can. Okay, so go to the front camera. Okay, I'm going to just be embarrassed, Jordan, today. Okay, so we... When, when, we, when I have ideas or we wanna meet, I like to go to lunch because if I don't leave the building, I'm just gonna keep looking at my computer, get distracted, a million people come in my office, so we went to lunch. And Jordan put on my calendar and Jocelyn's calendar and Denise's calendar, meet, go to lunch, because he has to set up the meetings. He put on their Popeyes. And then he said, oh, well, y'all didn't notice it was Popeyes. I was like, well, I did. So anyway, I made him go to Popeyes. We, it, we came back and we were there so long we stunk like fried chicken so Denise says we can never go to Popeyes but it's Jordan's fault so I don't think I've ever eaten in a Popeyes um but I will always remember Popeyes because of this video so this video idea came out came together at the Popeyes restaurant what I wanted to do was pick 10 jelly roll patterns that are just super popular I also wanted to be able to feature 10 different designers. And what I was looking for were patterns that were very simple. One jelly roll, one background, one binding, one backing. That way, most people have a jelly roll in their stash. Most people have a background in their, in their stash. Sorry, I want the clamshells. Y'all can tell I love this Baptist fan clamshell piece. 
So I picked 10 Jelly Roll quilt patterns that are my favorite. This is the only one we still have left because it's an It's So Emma pattern. This is the Portsmouth collection by Amy Smart. And the quilts you're gonna see in that video, they're gonna be new quilts, old quilts, um, old fabric you can never find again, but just simple so that if you're at home one day and you're like, I need to use this Jelly Roll, go to that video and all 10 of the patterns we have is paper and as PDF. And we did it so that you can easily search them at Fat Quarter Shop, but also I really want a place you can go that you can find something simple. One Jelly Roll, one background. Not one Jelly Roll, one background, one corner square, one background, one accent, one inner border, outer border. I just didn't want to have a ton of things you had to buy. I wanted it to be a video that was very evergreen and you went, you go back to it and back to it. So i um, super excited about that video. You definitely want to watch it. Now we have a coupon code. It expires today. We obviously weren't trying to make it expire today, but because of the video, because I got sick last week, that is why everything is kind of delayed. Um, so this one is an It's So Emma pattern designed by Sarah. Teresa pieced it and Maggie Honeyman quilted it. So I just love this. Like if, if I just had all my quilts quilted in this, it would be totally fine because I love it. Okay, so now we're going to move to things that are a little bit newer. So some of the sew alongs I just showed you are things that we've been doing for a long time. This one just started. This is the brand new fruit salad pattern book from Fig Tree Quilts. And I'm going to lay stuff out and then kind of talk you through it and give you my tips. I do have a lot of tips on this. Yeah. Okay. So. I am doing the table runner. That is a free setting that Joanna Figueroa of Fig Tree Quilts, who designed the fabric and the book, designed just for a fat quarter shop. So I'm sewing this. These are my blocks for the table runner. I'm also sewing this quilt, which is a sampler quilt on page 44 of the book. These are the blocks for that. So I will say doing both at the same time was probably not my greatest moment because it's a lot going on. Um, it's going to be an eight week sew along. We're on week two. This is week one. I was supposed to show it to you last week. I'm going to show you my tips for week one. So these are the cherry blocks. Another thing is uh, Joanna's not going to release which block she's working on that week. She's doing them in different orders. So the first tip is your cherries. On your table runner, I am basically using the same fabrics for the fruit that Joanna picked, either on the table runner or the book. I happen to have a lot of green fabrics left over from, where is it? What's the collection? What's that? Let's see. Branching out. Okay, so branching out, I had um, this, I had this left over and I had a lot of greens left over. So I went to my branching out stash and I'm using a lot of greens for that. Another thing that I did is I'm going to use this background throughout. The background in the kit for the table runner is the cream on cream, not the blue on cream. But to keep it consistent, I just used one background. So that's also what I did. <clears throat> so in the table runner, you have two cherries that go the same direction. But in the quilt... Let's see. These two go the same direction. And this one goes a different direction. So in the book, I'm trying to look at the page number. In the book, there are instructions to do it either left or right or however you want to call it. So I've made 
two that go one way and one that goes the other. So it gets complicated because the fruits are all going different directions. Another thing for this is for the table runner, your fabric E goes at the top, but on your quilt, the fabric E goes on the bottom. So I had to rip out these and move them before I added this. So you just kind of have to really pay attention. And I think, you know, just doing the table run and the quilt at the same time, probably not the best idea. So be careful if you want um, the leaves to go the different direction, just follow the pattern. And um, I do have two photos to show you. And this is when I'm crazy and I make things bigger. So when I say I make things bigger, that's an example of me making things bigger and then trimming down on the next photo. That is a complete waste of time, guys. When I see that, I think, gosh, Kimberly, you are really nuts. But that's the kind of stuff I do at home to get my block so perfect. Another thing is I am doing the two inch square and a square paper. You need a full pad of um, for the table runner. So basically I've made all of these so far and I just have been pressing them open and I'm kind of storing them um, with alpha bitties like I'll have this one and it's like table runner and then this one like a T and then a Q for the quilt so that I keep them separate. So that's week one. That's my tip is to be careful with the direction of the fabrics and the placement of the rectangle. This week that she just released were the lemon blocks. Okay. So this one Let me look at the book real quick. The book writes instructions on this one for the lemons to go this direction. So this is the direction that are for the table runners. But, and this is the same one. But she did three of the ones in the quill a different direction. So you just have to flip the fabrics and figure out how to do it. Um, but that's all on page 38, but it only shows you directions for one, one way. So I'm just trying to copy exactly what she's doing in terms of placement. Now on this one right here, this is a four and a half inch unfinished half square triangle. And here she has a blue lemon. So I just took a four and a half inch square. So you have to kind of, if you're trying to make it matchy match and exactly exact, you have to like really sit and think and make notes. And so this one has been, Fun. I'm using fruit cocktail, like I said, for all the fruits. Um, for my branching out quilt, I'm using this little stem and I'm making all the words go the same direction. And um, I'm using the greens from my stash. And um, you guys can guess, we're gonna do a little poll and see if you guys can guess what Joanna has planned for week three. So she, and these are not in any order. This is just the order I put it in, and I've already done the blueberries, and I'll show those to you when it's that week. But we've got blueberries, apples, pineapples, orange, pear, and then there are some daisy blocks. So you guys can vote and see if y'all can guess what she's claiming for next week. So this one's been fun, but I will say it's just been challenging because with fruit going different direction, with, um, you know, the, the rectangles going different different ways. I got a little, a little off. So that is the fruit salad. So long. Okay. So now I'm going to go into showing you different things that I've been showing you for, I feel like eternity. So this is kind of like my scrappy stuff I've been working on. So this is scrappiness is happiness, scrappy strings quilt using Lori's interfacing. So I made some in um, some different upcoming modas. So we've got All Star by Stacey Itsu, Cadence by Crystal Manning, Chateau de Chantilly, whatever, Chateau de Chantilly from French General, Evermore by Sweetfire Road, Flower Press from Katherine Watson. And these are future collections, so you can kind of see the shades. This is a Fluttering Leaves, Kansas Troubles. Quaint Cottage, Gingerbur. Sunflowers in My Heart by Kate Spain. And Sweet and Plenty by me and my sister. So I have those done. So now I have 44 blocks out of 80. 
And I love this quilt. It's like my favorite. So um, my other one that I made previously is on Kevin's couch in his um, in his office where he watches TV. So that one's definitely being used and will definitely eventually get washed. Um, so I'm about, you know, a little bit over halfway done. And I'm going to keep making them and showing them to you. I might just make these forever and ever and then never stop. Another quilt that I recently came up with, I haven't shown you too much. I've only shown it to you once. This is the rail fence. So what I've decided to do is from my different scraps and different collections that I make other quilts out of, for example, fruit salad, bliss, um, the Bonnie and Camille sew along, the vintage kite sew along, anything that I'm doing a sew along of, I'm going to make scraps left over from this. So these are some from of those, some of those other collections I just showed you. And um, we did this free, Jocelyn did this for you guys, and it's on the Fat Quarter Shop website. It's called Quilt Size Guide for Six Inch Finished Rail Fence Quilt Block. So it tells you the size to make your rectangles down here, and it tells you how to lay it out if you want to do crib, lap, large, twin, queen, king. So it's a free layout for you. I just wanted to show, I made a couple more blocks. And what I'm doing is just keeping some scraps of strips so that, for example, the this one I only had a green. I had two greens left over from fruit salad that I just showed you, but I didn't have a third green. So I just keep them together and then when Big Tree comes out with another collection, I'll just use it. So this is also gonna be something scrappy. There's not a pattern, you don't have to buy anything. This is a free printout. Just I'm just trying to always show you ways to use your scraps. The next thing I'm going to show you is Barn Star Sampler. So this one we sold out of the book for the second time. I am so sorry. It is coming back in May. So this book is by Shelly Cavana. I did want to let you know we saw our Benner Tech sales rep yesterday. She has a collection coming out much later in the year. That's This is her collection right here from Benner Techs. Her next collection is very similar. Since you guys love this book so much, I went ahead and bought that collection so that if, you know, if you like her stuff, you can do that. So I have already shown you January. So this is January part one, January part two. So I've shown you those, I've given you tips. And I've shown you these, this is February. And we're doing our sew along slightly different than Shelly. The reason why is um, I needed, I these take me forever and I'm actually sewing these so I have to have time. So this is February. I've given you my tips on live streams before. This is March for us. I'm gonna give you some tips. Okay, bless you. Okay, so I'm trying to get them all on the screen. Okay, so I am gonna show you something that I did totally different. So on this one, the book is sold out. We'll have more in May. The fabric bundle that we had tons of also sold out. And the foundation paper notion pad sold out. So I am so sorry. The reason the notions are sold out is there was a shortage of the paper that we use in our foundation paper. And we had to wait like four months for that paper to be back in stock. So I am using the on the dot, uh, on the farm, spot that I love, but I'm going to show you what I have done to make this different. So when you look in the book, <clears throat> the, I will say the instructions are great. I'm trying to show you where, okay. So right here, this is written to be a rectangle with two corner squares. That's how this is written. But I used triangle paper. So I used H300 to do this instead of rectangles, H300 here instead of rectangles. I used, you know, the flying geese paper here, square and square paper here. I made my hourglasses larger and trimmed down. Um, now this quilt, this quilt gets a little bit easier as the book moves on because the blocks start with the largest blocks and then it goes to, you know, smaller each month. This one, I would, 
I would say it is definitely more experience, but it's doable if you take the time and you really pin. It's definitely one where I pressed open because there are just so many seams. And also on a quilt like this, when you're putting this block to this block to this block, you make those in different days, different times. And I don't want to have to worry about which way I press this block or this block before I put them together. Um, Lori's interfacing that comes in squares did come out and it is in stock. Um, I don't know the SKU number. I'll look up the SKU number to tell you because that has been really popular. So that is Barnstar Sampler, Shelly Cavana. I'm using a combination of Sun Washed and Simply Delightful. Okay, now speaking of Riley Blake, they have a free sew along each year. I'm gonna take a drink just real quick. So, Riley Blake has a free sew along. We're on block 11 was last week, block 12 is this week. So I'm gonna show you my blocks. Now I'm using the Calico collection by Lori Holt and she actually picked all the fabric and the fabric placement. So all I had to do was sew them. So on this block, I pressed everything open. Also what I did is I used to make these, I used H250 triangle paper and then these corner squares right here, this is a corner square, I use glue. These, I use triangle paper H125, and I just really took my time sewing it together and pressed open. So um, this one I would say is a little bit, um, you know, a little bit more challenging because there's so many points to match. The designer is Heather Peterson. She's been in the quilting industry forever. She's got some great books. She used to design fabric for Henry Glass. Now she designs for Riley Blake. So this is, sparkle and shine the next block is called moab i'm not sure if i'm saying that right now this one i did change the instructions on do you think you could zoom so this one i did did change the instructions so right here this is written as a rectangle with corner squares I did two half square triangles and a square. And the reason I did that is I thought I would have a better result with my seams. And it's a lot easier to strip piece. So I used, um, instead of a rectangle with corner squares, I did two half square triangles with a center block. So don't ever be afraid. No, I will say there is a block coming up. And um, I changed the pattern completely. So, um, I'm just gonna apologize in advance for that. But I did wanna tell you, cause I don't think I've been able to show you this yet. Lori designed a free setting. The setting is on Riley Blake's website. So all of the free patterns are on Riley Blake's website. And she designed hers into a runner. And it's a free pattern and I'm gonna make mine exactly like hers. And so each week, you know, like each month they'll update it. So at the very end, it will show where all the blocks go. So you don't have to think. So if you're sewing it like Lori and I, you can just uh, follow um, her Instagram, her YouTube or mine. I'm just copying her. And speaking of Lori, her new interfacing, her first interfacing is ST-2163, I think. Her squares is ST-2163. Three one two six three, so similar skew but different, and I've been using it. Okay, now another free sew along is by a quilting life that is Sherry McConnell. And April's block I have finished. So on this one, I am using the Berry Basket collection by April Rosenthal, and with this I am using. Um, from that collection, there's a background that's a white on white, and then there's a gray on white. So in each block, I'm trying to use two backgrounds and then just different prints, just to kind of change it up instead of using like just one background. So this um, is completely free on the Sherry McConnell blog. She also has a wonderful YouTube channel where she gives tips. And um, on this one, very easy. What I did is I used H300 triangle paper 
Now, when you look at this block, there are lots of ways to piece it. So I pieced it just like Sherry, but you know, there are other ways to piece this where this is one big piece and not chopped off. So anytime you see something, you can piece it however you want. Now this I wanted to show you is just an example of, I color my things in EQ and then I make notes. So this just told me what size I needed to do for the paper. So that's free, that's my April. And on that one, I am gonna be using a finishing from a Lori Holt book and be showing you that around the summertime so that you can know how I'm finishing mine. I always do mine a little bit different than Sherry's at the end of the year, just because if I just sew along and just do the same thing Sherry does, there's no reason you're gonna to wanna to watch me. So I have to change it up a little bit. So now I'm gonna show you lots of new things at Fat Quarter Shop. This might be super long, but the reason why it is, I haven't been here, but I love this. So I'm so excited, Sunny Shot, I cannot talk. Sunny Side showed up this week on Monday. So this is our brand new Sunny Side quilt kit. It's called More or Less. It uses two Sunny Side jelly rolls. Angel designed it, Riley pieced this, and Joanna Marsh, quilted it and I love this design. I, I just love it. I just love anything simple like this. So like I said, it is um, very simple. The only way to get the pattern for this is to either get the quilt kit or get the um, Jolly Bar. And you need two Jolly Bars to make that. And then I'm super excited to tell you guys that, um, you know, when Martingale closed, uh, I really wanted Kim Deal to be able to still have her patterns in the market because she is one of our best-selling um, authors in terms of books. So we are now publishing patterns, one pattern per collection that she does with Henry Glass. And um, so it's written by Sarah. It's gonna be wonderfully written, just like an Itsuoma pattern. I'm gonna show you the very first one. Now, Kim Deal pieced this one, and I'm gonna show you some different things. So, she does a really cool binding where the front is skinny and the back she pulls back further. I love this. I would love to have her come on the channel and show this because when you look at the back, I just think it looks amazing. Now. I'm just gonna give you a tip. If you have never followed Kim Deal, you spell it D-I-E-H-L on Facebook. She's hilarious. So she puts a lots of quilting, lots of stuff about her granddaughter, and oh my gosh, you gotta follow her just for inspiration. And she talks a lot on her Facebook about color placement and scrappiness with backgrounds. And she is a designer for Henry Glass. We do some block of the months with her also. And um, so Kim Deal made this. Okay, we're gonna show the other side. We're gonna show a little bit over here too. And it's really cool if you just look at the way she, she did her, this is totally scrappy, but totally different than what we do. But I mean, she's got scrappy backgrounds. She's got all the colors. Oh my gosh, I love this. So we might have to do a sew along with this at some point. I might have to do it in, um, maybe I could do that in scraps. The next quilt I'm gonna show you is we have a Ruby Star Society quarterly club. Sorry, I'm running out of breath. In the quarterly club, you get 12 fat quarters, a spool of thread, and an exclusive pattern. We only have a few spots available. This club and the Cape Club have really filled up. Um, we ship this one in January, April, July, and October. This quilt, the kit for that, and the club for that shipped in April. This is called Razzle Dazzle. Crystal designed it. Ashley, who you can chat with in chat, pieced it, and Joanna Marsh quilted it. So this one is now sold out. You can't get this one anymore, but um, I, think, uh, I think it's really pretty. And I love the binding choice because it's kind of like a patchworky print. So that is the, so you can't get this anymore, but if you sign up now, 
you would get the July shipment. And then I have some new fabric to show you guys. I'm gonna, once I show you all the new fabrics, what I'm going to do after I show you the what's new is answer questions. So just throw in questions and the more questions you have, the more I will answer. So besties, we just saw our free spirit sales rep. This is going to be a Tula Pink collection. It's a smaller collection, it's called Besties. It's meant to commemorate your pets, dogs, kitties. And um, she did a really fun Facebook Tuesday Live that you can go back and watch and she'll show you all about her inspiration for the fabric, her stories about the fabric. You can pre-order it now at Fat Quarter Shop. There is, you can pre-order bundles and there is a quilt kit also. So I wanted to show you that. And now this is some new mode of fabric. So this is Union Square by Minnick and Simpson. This would be a great option for summer memories. If you want, this would be a great option for summer memories. Union Square, Flor okay, Union Square is here. Florence's Fancy is by Betsy Chechen. And for example, this right here is a shirting. From Ruby Star Society, we have Reading Nook, Fat Quarter Bundle by Sarah Watts. Now, this is a Fat Quarter Bundle, it's just folded differently. There's some books. That'd make a really cute cat bed. So that's Reading Nook by Sarah Watts. And on, on the Ruby Star, we carry all of their collections and we carry them yardage, pre-cuts, all the things. Now this one is Camelot Fabrics. And like I've said before, Camelot Fabrics is actually based in Canada, so the fabric is more expensive and that's really a lot to do with the getting it over the border. So there are five new prints that are Star Wars. I know absolutely nothing about Star Wars, so I know that's Darth Vader, Stormtroopers, that's all I know. Somebody's R2-D2 and somebody's Yoda, I don't know. Kevin gets really frustrated because I don't know anything about Star Wars and he's like, where did you come from? I'm like, well, obviously not where you came from. This is Cheddar and Cole by Pam Buta. Now, I am glad to show this. Pam Buta fabric sells like crazy. This would look great in that spangled pattern I just showed you. So she, so Pam Buta has patterns and she has, she sells, all her fabrics are reproduction based. And her fabrics have been really selling out lately to where I can't get more. So whatever she's doing, she's doing right because her fabrics are selling like crazy. And then these are, so I would say that's like a gold. And then this, well it's cheddar. And then um, blacks. This one has kind of an, some of these have an autumn feel and some do not. And the um, fabric, fabric company is Marcus Fabrics. Now this next one, I almost don't even want to show it to you guys. This is called Queen of Ween. So like Halloween. We got this in and there are lots of panels. All the panels sold out. So somebody came in and bought all five panels overnight. So I am just want to apologize. I've ordered more. I don't know. So this one's really cool. I'm going to open it and show it to you. But the panels, um, we'll have more. Just We will have more panels. It's just... So one customer came in and just bought all of them. That's so funny, nerve pills. Agents wanted. So it's, you know, Halloween, it's fun. Little tickets.
think that's like a card. Really cute, called Queen of King, Queen of Ween. Now this, the bundle, the bundle doesn't have any of the panels. So the panels are sold separately. So that is new. And then another thing that we have is really awesome is <clears throat> my sales rep suggested this. So we have a sales rep, his name is Bob, and he's really awesome. And he has been with us from the very beginning. Like selling us fabric from 20 years ago, he was selling me fabric. So he went through the Free Spirit inventory and asked Free Spirit to run a list of the top 25 selling case prints. So we put together a bundle, and this is based on overall sales to quilt stores, not fat quarter shop sales. This is all um, Free Spirit sales. So going forward, we will keep this bundle kind of evergreen. As long as we can get the fabric from Free Spirit, we're going to offer this. And we will keep all of these yardages in stock because they're the top 25. So it's not meant or designed to be with a certain pattern. It's just a collection of kaif and it's a combination of old, new, basics. You know, it's all different and it's based on the free spirit sales to their customers. So that's really fun. And then we put together some uh, fabrics in big cuts at um, a slightly lower price so that we could um, sell you some bigger background prints that are just easy to either grab and go. This is three and a quarter yards of Love Lily Sugar. This actually sold out yesterday and I had to make more. This is a five yard cut of stitched. So this is a fig tree background, five yards, it's great. This is a five yard cut of Bermuda Bella. This is a five yard cut of Shabby by Lori Holt in the color Latte. This is a five yard cut of Pat Sloan's Fabric Sleepovers. This is a three yard cut of Garden Gatherings by uh, Lisa Bonjing. So these are, and this, if this is something you guys like, and if this sells good, we're going to keep doing this. So, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, I just want something for a backing. So these are just things that we're trying. We might keep it. We might not. This one obviously is selling really good. And this is selling the second best. This is just a great fig tree fabric. It's um, from the Stitch collection. So if you guys, and sometimes they'll be five yards, sometimes they'll be three. It's kind of based on I guess what we are able to make. Okay, I'm so excited to show you this. So we are now selling, now these will all, these might change over the years, but this is, we have all these wonderful six inch foundation papers. We have Economy Block, Sparkle Star, Log Cabin, Pineapple, Snail Trail, Courthouse Steps. So we're selling them as a set. So if you just want to collect six inch blocks, this is now a set. And then we have one for the 12 inch. It's really heavy. So same thing, same blocks in a 12 inch set. When Susan Aki was on, she was talking about pre-wound bobbins and we had to reach out to this company. So this company, you know, usually we buy notions through a distributor because it's easy. We have an account. You just go online, you order what you want. This company, we had to set up an account. So it's a company, it's called National Embroidery Bobbins is the name of the company. And um, this is 144 size L. So you're going to have to refer to your sewing machine to see what size your sewing machine takes because off the top of my head, I don't know. So size L, this was 144 of them, and they're white. This one is a 24 pack, and then this is a three pack. So you'll have to just read on the website. Now these are polyester threads, and I've never sewn with polyester threads, but Susan Aki um, talked about it. You guys went crazy, so I bought them. So you guys will have to let me know what you think of it once you try it. 
And now I'm going to answer questions. We're going to do a giveaway too, but I'm going to answer your questions first. Okay. Gail Fisher, would you ever reach out to Tim Holtz for an interview? He talks about his fabrics on his live streams, but says he really doesn't know how quilters use his collection. He would be funny. Yes. Uh, Denise, put that on my calendar for Monday. Our sales rep for Free Spirit is coming Monday again. So I will talk to him about that because I um, he knows how to get a hold of him. What month does the new quilt pattern start in the Sew Sampler box? A couple days. So April. What is the name of the Jolly Bars? So we have lots of Jolly Bars. The one that I showed you today was Sunnyside. Are you going to give measurements for finishing of socialites? Yes, next week. Did the spang oh, did the spangled kit delivery get pushed back? I forgot to mention that. So the spangled pattern and PDF is available now. The kits will not be available till June. And the reason why is she designed that after Henry Glass had already placed their order, so I couldn't get enough fabric. So we will have kits, they will not be here till June. Do I ever sew with batiks? Well, I have a really cool video coming up soon using batiks. Can I recommend a pattern to use K facet pre-cuts with? I love the colors, but I'm afraid to make something that won't look good. You know, our K facet club has the best patterns to go with it, um, but they're only available in the club. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Oh, thank you to Super Chat from Reese or Ordolani. Will there be yardage and lighthearted? Yes. It's just not here. It's uh, all the lighthearted will come in like May, June. Is it May, June? It might be later than that. It's lighthearted. That's later than that. It's coming out in the fall. Is there a fat quarter bundle with Sunnyside with all the fabrics? Yes. So Sunnyside just came in. The pre-cuts and the yardage and... Um, I think it's going to sell out. Do dark fabrics often show through when using as a backing? So that depends on how dark it is and the thickness of your batting. So I would just talk to your long arm quilter if you're concerned and say, hey, I have this backing. It's really black and the front of my quilt's really white. I don't want it to show through. What batting can you use? That's what I would recommend. What is the size of the Bliss quilt? right there 57 inches square when did you say the new quilt sampler starts April Beth asks will this be pattern be available with instructions for those not using triangle paper no it's a free pattern and only available for triangles on a roll Janet Riddling if you are already subscribed to the sew sampler do you need to resubscribe no it just keeps going how did I square that to 42 inches? So that is my, okay, I'll, I'll tell you. That's my big block from Triangles in a Roll, and I'll show you. <clears throat> so what I did, cut this wider. And then, um, from there, when it was on there, wider, I drew some friction lines over here that, okay, so if it was supposed to be one inch away from the seam and I made it bigger, I just drew a line. And then over here, I drew a line of how that was supposed to be. And then you put a measuring tape. And if it's a little big or a little short, you just, when you're trimming it down, you just trim it. So you just like use pin, use your friction pins, you know, use the mat or use a measuring tape and just kind of finagle it. $10 from Matt Cox 71 loving the triangles on a roll, quilt along, love triangles on a roll. Thank you. I'm happy that a lot of you have tried it because, um, you know, it's just awesome. Will there be a list of fabric requirements for pressed flowers? Yes. I'm trying to think of where that is, but yes. I don't know where it is. Um, we'll have to follow up next week and tell you where to find that because I don't know off the top of my head. What fabric collection are you using for the triangle quilt? Fruit Cocktail by Fig Tree Quilts. 
Dawn says, if you run out of a fabric, I know a great quilt shop. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I'm going to tell you a secret. When it sells out for you guys, it sells out for me too. <laughs> so sometimes I get in a bind, just like you guys. Could I, you, I could incorporate that mistake block into the backing? Yes. Have I been able to use any foundation papers for the spool blocks? Um, for the for the spool quilt from Lori, if I use paper, I'll tell you. Bonnie says she's making the quilt in red. Would like to make it smaller. Any tips on how to do that? Home again. Um, we only wrote it for one size. Um, you'd have to kind of just sit and do the math. And I think it would be if you have had enough experience, you'd be able to do that. I know somebody on the Facebook group, instead of making it 16 or 18, she made it 12. Can you get the table runner pattern for fruit salad if you buy the book? So the you can actually get the table runner pattern for free without buying anything at Fat Quarter Shop. But it's just the setting pattern. You have to have the book for the blocks. Piggy, how's Piggy? Piggy's great. He's getting really fat though. So I have to figure that out. He's like, yeah, I have to put him on a diet or something. I don't know, I'm gonna have to do something. We've all been sick with like allergies, so we haven't been able to take him for a walk because it's like we walk outside and we just like, you know, it's just, so we got, I have to start taking him on walks. He's getting fat. What are the sizes of the strips? So that I followed a Lori's book for the size. I just signed up for So Sampler. Will I get April? Yes, you will get April. Thank you for signing up. Will there be another Socialites? Okay, so this will be a year and a half to two years. We have to space them out. Um, but we'll do one, but it won't be for, it definitely won't be this year. If, if, if we did that, Jocelyn would probably quit. She'd probably be like, I gotta go home. I'm sick. I can't, I don't know. Like, I don't think she could add that. Do I color, when do you color in EQ? Do you use actual fabrics or solids? I use the actual fabrics. Super chat from Mark the Hall. Thank you so much. How many fat quarters do you need for the triangle quilt? I don't remember, but if the free requirements are on our site. Will there be yardage in the besties line? Yes. So when we pre-sell fabric, we only pre-sell the pre-cuts, not the yardage, but we always, if we have pre-cuts, we always have the yardage. Okay, so that looks like that is all of my questions today. Thank you so much for joining me. We have a giveaway though. So we're going to give away, it's going to be a big, big giveaway. So we're going to give away three Bountiful quilt kits. So three winners get three kits. So that's crazy. That's a really big giveaway. And um, in the comments, what I want you to answer is, what is your very favorite notion to use when you're quilting? And I'll see you guys next week.